Hello and welcome. For the last series of episodes, we've been exploring inductive reasoning. Many things can influence the information we gather, and therefore how we connect the pieces to form our conclusions. Bias, misinformation, the desire to want to see what we want to see, etc. all contribute to the possibility of our conjectures being flawed. Because this type of reasoning works with unproven facts, it is only with practice we can improve this type of reasoning ability to help us with a broad range of problems. From math to making decisions about our future. It is not possible to show you how to solve every problem you'll face as they are far too numerous. And our success and advancements continually make new problems. Learning at its best gives you a better chance at solving those problems you've never seen when you do encounter them. The complexity of our modern world has created the need for very good reasoning skills, which we'll continue to explore in this episode as we introduce deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning does not have the uncertainty of inductive reasoning, as it relies on accepted facts, which makes it a bit more straightforward. There had to be a time when all reasoning was inductive, as our ideas were not written in stone. Eventually, the conjectures that surfaced from exploring patterns were either proven and accepted, or counterexamples forced them to be reworked or tossed out. What remains are the ever-increasing number of facts, rules, theorems, truths, etc. that we learn and rely on. Deductive reasoning makes use of the rules we have put into place so it is clearer. It allows us to function in a math class or in society. It's a bit like playing a board game like life. You have to know the rules first. With deductive reasoning, we do not have to wonder if we are right or wrong, as long as our reasoning contains truthful statements. We are just subtracting, deducting, from general statements that are already true and connecting them to more specific ones. Inductive reasoning works the other way, making specific observations from a pattern and then trying to make a more general conclusion or conjecture that we believe is true. The statements we make when reasoning are often referred to as premises. In deductive reasoning, the assumption is made that because the premises are true, so is our concluding statement. Here's an example. All spiders have eight legs. Black widows are spiders. Black widows have eight legs. We could also use the general premise to make a statement of exclusion. Any insect with only six legs is not a spider. Here's another one. If A equals B and B equals C, we can make the statement that A equals C. The idea here is that there's no guesswork. We are just connecting things we know to be true in different ways. All four-sided shapes are quadrilaterals. A rectangle has four sides. A rectangle is a quadrilateral. We can extend deductive reasoning a bit deeper with an example like this. If a times b is greater than zero, then we can make the statement that both a and b have to be greater than or less than zero. In other words, both must be positive or both must be negative. We can make this statement because of the rules we have for multiplying integers with signs. We can use a Venn diagram to summarize our deductive reasoning. This large oval can be used to represent all quadrilaterals. Within that broad category, we can identify other four-sided figures that have special features. Like if their opposite sides are the same lengths, we have parallelograms, which we can place inside. We can refine this further as rectangles have both equal length opposite sides and four right angles. As they are special parallelograms, we can place them inside that oval. Now our Venn diagram summarizes our conclusion that all rectangles are both parallelograms and quadrilaterals. 
But of course, not all quadrilaterals are parallelograms or rectangles. Our reasoning can extend to shapes like triangles. As they have only three sides, we can conclude they are not quadrilaterals, and therefore need to be placed on their own. With deductive reasoning, we start with what we know. For example, we know there are 180 degrees in a straight line. If we divide the line and have a known angle, we can reason that the missing angle must complete the 180 degrees. Here's another example. Mathematicians have proven that the angle formed at the center of a circle is always two times that of a point on the circumference when drawn from the same two points. This math rule is called the angle at the center theorem. A diameter is the longest line that can fit in a circle and of course passes through the center point. The angle at the center is 180 degrees, making any other point on the circle one half that at 90 degrees. When we look to solve for the missing angle A in this diagram, we apply our rules. We know the inside angles of a triangle total 180. When we subtract the 60 degrees given, and from the theorem we just introduced, the 90 degrees of the angle at the point on the circle, we discover A is 30 degrees. One of the great things about this type of reasoning is that you know if you apply the rules properly, you'll be correct. Or right, like the angle. The art of deduction can show up in any discipline. Here are a couple science examples. Neon is element number 10. This may not reveal its color when energized or its abundance in the atmosphere, but with the help of a few chemistry rules, some conclusions can be drawn. Like that it has to have 10 protons in its nucleus, and that it occupies the 10th spot on the periodic table which places it in a row with other noble gases, which we know are all unreactive because they have full outer shells of electrons. Neon's 10 electrons are arranged in two full shells of 2 and 8, so it has little interest in the other elements. And a biology example. All mammals give birth to live young. Dolphins are mammals. The dolphins give birth to live young. But you can extend your deductive reasoning further to include things like whether animals rely on external or internal fertilization, for example. Hard-shelled eggs are a clue with reptiles or birds. It is pretty easy to deduce that fertilization has to happen before the egg has a shell. Or, if animals give birth to live young, you can assume internal fertilization is a prerequisite for the young being able to develop inside. Hopefully the following example will help pull or push this all together. At the risk of dating myself, I will share that as a student many years ago, we were introduced to the possibility of continental drift. The suggestion that the Earth's continents were somehow drifting around. Inductive reasoning starts with noticing patterns, which the geology of the Earth had plenty of. For example, the continents seemed to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And there was plenty of data locating events like earthquakes and volcanoes. At first, the conclusion, or conjecture, would have been preposterous. There's no way the continents could be moving. Just like the doubts about the Earth being round, eventually enough information was gathered and the theory of plate tectonics took shape. Once acknowledged, it was deductive reasoning's turn as the premise of the Earth being composed of moving plates was connected back to explain the formation of the mountain ranges, the understanding of the location of earthquakes and volcanoes, the reason for similar fossils and minerals on distant continents, and the unique organisms on isolated islands like Australia and Madagascar. Inductive reasoning gets the ball rolling, and with time, may become an accepted fact that we can use to deduce our understanding of other things. Play tectonics is like other discoveries made possible by math and science, in that these ideas are often challenging to comprehend, 
and can even seem unreasonable. But science cannot be bound by our inability to understand, or our desire to only uncover what we wanted to find. It cannot discriminate. Findings like a non-Earth-centered universe, plates moving, the Big Bang, our storied human history, may seem at times bewildering, but they reinforce our need to be logical. Hopefully you can see deductive reasoning has a place in your reasoning toolkit to make some great conclusions from other knowledge you possess or rules that you know. Whether we're solving math problems or solving a crime, deductive reasoning can be applied in a great variety of ways. The more you learn and understand, the more ways you'll find to apply it. Like when you start your own business and you read this fact. Expenses you use to earn income can be used to reduce your income tax. My car is used to earn income. My car expenses can be used to reduce my taxes. When the second premise is true, then yes, the Canada Revenue Agency allows you to write off these types of expenses against income. They are appropriately called deductions. But there's no room for premises that are not true as they lead us to false conclusions. Nor can we bend the rules because we wish a different outcome. In math or in life, this will lead to the wrong answers and poor reasoning. <laughs>